somebody that you spoke to about the Lord or that you've even led to the Lord. Think about it. And if, if, you're, if they're not doing and going and they're like plow around them, but by that I mean you're calling, fertilize yeah. the spiritual ground around them. Talk to them about the Lord. Quote some Bible scripture to them. That's how you'll know if you're if your jewel it needs polished up. We all get depressed sometimes. We have anxiety, but we need each other. So if you have spoke to someone, I don't care if it's been years ago, check on them. Check on them. Check on them. Call them. Are you still in the faith? Are you still plowing for the Lord? Are you still working, Daniel? Are you, talk to your mother. Talk to your sisters. Talk to your brothers. Talk to your friends. Or ask them, Terry, if they know they still serve the Lord. But that ain't none of my business. Yes, it is. Your business, Sherry. If you want stars in your crown, it's our business to keep right on helping the people. Oh, my God. Stay fertile for the Lord. You can be seated this morning, but I just want you to keep praising the Lord. I just want you to keep thinking about, will there be any stars? Have you spoke to anybody? Has your love been instrumental in directing somebody in the to the Lord? Just think about it. Oh my God, hallelujah. What do you think about it? It's a serious business for me. What have you got there? We're going to say real, real, real. Old church oh. You know, that is it's important. It's really important that we think that our business of being the pointing people to Christ is an important yeah. job. It's a very important job. The most important job you ever have, more than the president, more than the governor, more than the police chief, prosecuting attorney Jeremy. Our job is more important because it deals with souls. Praise God. The others might deal with lives, but we deal with souls. Praise God.
been here for quite two or three weeks. Does anybody call to check up on him? Yeah, when you think about him, when you look back around in, in the church pews and you think, well, who's here? Who's not here? Do you ever think, well, I should call? Oh. I should maybe ask somebody for a phone? Should I go out of my way a little bit to see what's wrong? <coughs> and, of course, you know, I always ask Monty about Mike or talk to him myself on the phone. Or who do you? Tell, just, just think about it. Who are you? What if you had? If, if, if we was a live plant, if our brothers and sisters was a live plant, and then how, how much water would, would we ever put on? You know, because water is the life of the plant. Think about it. I mean, and I mean, uh, I get concerned about uh, uh, my own son. He, he's, he's he's not diligent in his church habits. Like he craves definitely not diligent. I mean, these are people that if, if some of us don't talk to them, somebody don't tell them, say, hey, you know, you know, if you don't get no spiritual growth before you know it, you're, you're, you're dead. You, you wither up and you die. You wither up and you die. And you know who you are in your family. You know, if you look around the church pews, you can see that people they seem to have a big deal for the Lord going. But where are they? What, can, what, what do they love more than they do the Lord? What do they love more than they do him? Not to be in church without their sick comes up to them. And Dwayne, he was supposed to come here this morning because he was going to take his picture and be giving his card and uh, give his present to him. He doesn't like me. Okay. But you see, even the children start losing their desire when they see the adults losing theirs. So when you see him, pray for him. And our sister, Co, she had planned on being here this morning, according to her message. But she, you know, I told you Wednesday about her dog patches that she asked us to pray for. You said, that's stupid. Pray for a dog. Well, it's not your dog, so you ain't got no reason to say it's stupid. Okay? Yeah. You know what I mean? That's everybody's business. But so I don't know if yeah. something's happened to him or what. But still pray for people when they say they're going to be at church or they're, they, they're usually there. What's going on? What, what's going on? Because it's one little touch, one little snare the devil could get into their lives. And before you know it, Jamie, they are pulled completely out. The devil will pull them completely out. And Jeffrey can tell you that. Anybody in here that's been a Christian more than one week can tell you that. The devil talks to me every day. What you used to go? Why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? You, you better spend your time doing this. You, you know you're tired. So who do you think you are? I know who I am. I'm a saint. I'm a child of the little king. Yes, that's why I keep going on. That's exactly what I tell him right back in his face. As he string it back. I'm a saint. I'm a child of the king. And I'm going to keep going. I'm going on. And Jesse up here is a saint. And she's a child of the king, and she's going to talk. She wants to come up here. And she, you lay your books down. You don't have to bring them up. And she is so happy. And she's already had one person in the church wish her happy birthday. Davey. Already wished her. And now we're all going to wish her happy birthday and sing to her. How, how's that sound? Does that sound like a plan? Yeah. Okay, you turn right around up here. So I just want to take your picture. You'll be in front of a pretty savory, right? Oh, and my, oh, and my, my this is okay. Happy birthday to Okay, what else? I'm thinking about what would be an X, an A for Special 
An A for special ed. Amen. And a math teacher. And a math teacher, yeah. okay. But then what else are you going to be a Christian when you're doing all this? I will be a Christian for the rest of my life. Oh, Amen. Amen. <laughs> That's right. See if I'm worth that. We got Steph on nobody's toes. We might have friends. And we got little Dorian's here, but he's not here. And we got uh, old old Craig's here, but he's not here. And that, that old, and we got her old, old, old Dwayne's here, but he's not here. So we just have to wait on him. We have to wait on these things. Now, I just wondered, did anybody bring your Bible? Did you think you bring your Bible this morning? Oh, my. If you want to fancy boats, run off without their glasses. You know they're bad off. Now, did anybody run off the screen without their glasses? No. I hope not, right? I hope they didn't.
and we want to get some more tall boys. Our other tall hey, boy hanger. You hey. boys get tall, okay? Turn around and help. Turn around, tall boy hanging right now. Okay, okay, hey. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is that blood that makes me white as snow. No other can I go. Nothing but the blood. Downstairs, right? Does anybody have good bathroom before you get down there? Okay. Can you see the child? Shh. Aren't they wonderful? Aren't they wonderful? Now, Bonnie, you're on the one and Cherry, get ready. And give us a congregational song. And Davey's going to come and take up the offering. Davey, would you come up here? basket and stand right there and then we're going to ask Jamie to ask a blessing over it. Stand right over there beside of Jamie. Stand right there beside of Jamie. Jamie, would you ask a blessing on this offering? Where are you going, boy? Okay. And the church said amen with him. So, okay, you got if you want to empty your pockets so that if you want to shout to Jeffrey preaches, you'll be a lot lighter. better to be here than afflicted and sick um, oh, yeah. in a hospital someplace. Yes, indeed. You know, I've got a lot to be thankful for. <clears throat> I've been there too many times, and each time, he seems like he always raised me up. Amen. <clears throat> I'm going to try this song. Be patient. Uh, the Bible says, make a joyful noise into the Lord. That's what I do. I make a noise. <laughs> I 
of the bridesmaids. Yeah, and we're going to go to Matthew 25, and I'm going to read the first nine verses of it. But I'm going to read it in the New Living Translation Bible. Um, that Bible is thought for thought, and it's more in our uh, English to where you can comprehend and understand. Um, church, we was all in Egypt. I want you to know that. We all come through the sea, the Red Sea, yep. and we're on the other side. We've been put on the path, that marathon race, to make it to heaven. Yep. You've been justified. You got your salvation from the penalty of sin. You got your sanctification, but which is a continual process. You have been set apart. You have been chosen. He has put the ring on your finger yes. for the engagement ring. Yes. Yes. But you got to continue with it. Amen. You got to show up to the wedding. Yes. Yes. So give me an amen when you're at Matthew 25. Amen. amen. Listen to what he said. The kingdom of heaven will be like mm -hmm. Ten's bridemaid who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Mm -hmm. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The five who were foolish didn't take enough olive oil for their lamps. But the other five were wise enough to take along extra oil. Yeah. When the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, they were aroused by a shout. Look, the bridegroom is coming. Come out and meet him. Mm -hmm. All the bridesmaids got up and prepared their lamps. Mm -hmm. Then the five foolish ones asked the others, please give us some of your oil because our lamps are going out. Mm -hmm. But the others replied, we don't have enough for all of us. Go to the shop and buy for yourself. Yeah. Listen, this is the church. Yes, yeah. Yeah. It is. Yeah. They was five wise in the church. Yeah. That means half of the church was wise. Yeah. They yeah. was prepared. They was ready for the bridegroom. Amen. They was ready to go into that way. Yes. But there was five foolish that didn't. Yes. They was running out of God's grace and mercy. Listen, his spirit will only uh, deal with us for so long. Amen. Yes. That's what the good Lord said Amen. about. And, you know, in the New King James Version, it says they trimmed their wit. Uh -huh. Well, listen, the five wives did trim their way. They got the sin out of their life. That's exactly what they did. Because he tells us not to cover our light with the basket. What he's saying with all that sin is what he is telling us. Do you have enough oil today? I really want to know. You got to, listen to me. You got to ask yourself today. Do you have enough oil? Do you spend enough time with Jesus Christ Amen. and his word? Amen. I'm telling you right now, this is the rapture of the church. Amen. This is the rapture of the church. Amen. And by this parable that Jesus Christ told, half of the church Amen. is going to stay. Yes. I'm telling you. Yes. God's word is true. Yes. He says only half of my church is going to be ready to come with me and go into the marriage supper of the Lamb. Only half. I want you to realize that. What are you placing before God today? You've got to be placing something. I want to say this to you because God's telling me. Uh, in Luke chapter 16, God talks about the prodigal son. And most people want to just stick with the one that left. He uh -huh. took everything and left. Uh -huh. yeah. But let me tell you something. The other son was a prodigal too. Uh -huh. He was sitting right he in the church. Right there. Yeah. Right there. That's the truth. He wasn't in love with God. Uh -huh. Because he even told God, you don't do nothing for uh -huh. me. Uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. He got religious. He's really a Pharisee. Uh -huh. He had lost his oil. Uh -huh. God got tired of dealing with him. Uh -huh. I want you to know that. So today I want you to examine your own salvation. Yes, Test yourself whether or not your faith is genuine or not. And only you can do that. And Geneva can't right. do it for you. I cannot do it for you. I would love to do it for you, but salvation is an individual thing. Amen. You can't say, listen, what did the uh, foolish say to the wife? Give us some of your own. Listen, I can't take the Holy Spirit and give it to my children today. Amen. I can't give it to my best friend today. No, 
I only have enough oil for myself today. I can't give you none. I would give it to you gladly because I love you today. But I just can't give it to you. I want you to ask yourself, do you have the, enough olive oil? Because we know oil represents the Holy Spirit. Yes. Do you have enough of God? Yes. Do you have enough of God to be able to burn the sin out? Uh -huh. Because we're all that yes. pot of gold. I've told you many, many, many times. You're 99% pure, but you got the 1% yes. of sin in you. When God turns up the heat, mm -hmm. the impurities rise to the top. Yes. And when you confess them and you put them under the blood, he cleanses you of that. But if you ain't got the oil, you can't make the impurities rise to the top. It takes that oil burning inside of you to make you recognize the things that you're doing and the sins that you have in your life. Okay, we're going to go to John chapter 15, 4 and 5. And, and I'm going to read this in the New King James. Some will be in the New King James, some will be in the NLT, because this is the way God's gave it to me to do today. He said, Abide in me, and I in you, uh -huh. as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Mm -hmm. Neither can you unless you abide in me. Amen. I'm the vine. Yes. You are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, bears much fruit. Yes. For without me, you can do nothing. Amen. We know Nazareth means little green shoot. Mm -hmm. Jesus is that little green yes. shoot. He is that vine. Yes. We are his branches. Amen. But he says, you have to abide in me. Abide means to conform. Yes. It means to remain. Yes. It means to stay. Yes. It means to listen. It Amen. means to be obedient. Amen. That's what abide means. Uh -huh. And he is the water. His yes. word is the water uh -huh. that makes us produce word, the yes. fruit yes. that he wants us to. Praise God. Listen, Paul tells us in Galatians 5, 19 through 21, I really love it how he says, and then we're going to talk about it. Now the works of the flesh are evident, mm -hmm. which are adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, yes. hatred, contention, jealousy, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, mm -hmm. dissension, heresies, envy, murder, drunkenness, and revolvers, and of the like, of which I have told you beforehand, just as I have told you in the times past, Listen, mm -hmm. that those who practice such things will not no. inherit the kingdom of God. Listen, these are all examples of idols. Amen. Mm -hmm. What's the idol in your life? Mm -hmm. What is there that you're placing before God? It don't have to be drunkenness. It does not mean it has to be fornication. No. He is only giving you the example yeah. of idols. There's many idols. They can be a house. Yeah. They can be a car. They can be money. Uh -huh. They can be shopping. Yeah. It can be your children. Yeah. True. What is the idol in your life? Mm -hmm. Church. Yeah. Because you will miss it. You will miss the rapture. If you place anything before God, you're going to miss the rapture. He says, pray yourself worthy to escape yes. the coming of the yeah. wrath of God that's coming yeah. against the disobedient children. Uh -huh. Now listen, we've already got the foundation. This is the rapture of the church. This is the church. Yes. And half the church yes. is going to be stay here. I want you to understand yes. that. Which half are you? Are you the five wise or are you the five foolish? That's what I want to know. Yes. Listen, he tells us in the book of Colossians chapter 3, put to death those members. Yes. That are yes. on the earth, the fornication, adultery, idolatry, yes. all that stuff. He says, put it to death. That's what the water baptism is all about. Yes. Yes. Listen, you died to the old life. You was buried and resurrected, just yes. like Jesus Christ. You was resurrected in unity yes. into yes. Christ Jesus. Yes. Three is unity Amen. in the Hebrew. Mm -hmm. The tribulations is coming fast. Listen, what he says, because of the things. The people are doing the covetousness, the evil desires, the idolatry. And let's just focus on idolatry. Yeah, yeah. Anything that yeah, you're yeah, placing yeah. before God. He says, because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons uh -huh. of the disobedient. The tribulations is coming. Uh -huh. Everybody in the world knows that the yeah, tribulations yeah. is coming. Yeah. We're in Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh -huh. We really are. Jesus. The only thing different 
is they don't have a bed right out in the public uh, yeah. having sex on it. Yeah. Um, but they're doing it on the internet. Yeah. You want to watch sex or anything yeah. you want to watch? It's a push of the button. Mm -hmm. You know what my idol is? The stupid phone. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to tell you yeah. the truth. It distracts me. Uh -huh. Yeah. I can't keep my focus on God because I'm checking my email. I'm checking my bank account. I'm checking Facebook. Yes. Yes. I, I'm doing all of these things yes. and it's a distraction. Yes. Yes. Then, whether you like it or not, once you see the things on Facebook, then your mind starts thinking yes. about yes. them yes. Yes. instead of God. That's why you can't read your Bible. Yes. That's why you can't meditate on the Word of God because you put distractions yes. in there like yes. first thing in the morning. God told me, and he done gave me the warning again uh, this morning for my birthday. He said, I'm sick of the phone, Jeffrey. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm sick of it. Yeah. Yes, you pray to me all day. Yeah. Yes, but you can't even get into my work because you're so distracted because you've got to keep picking the stupid phone up, uh -huh. he told me. Yeah. That's the idol in most of our lives. Yeah. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. Then somebody tells us, and this is a struggle. Listen, God never said anything was going to be easy. Yeah. I walked by my phone probably 50 times today yeah. and went to reach for it. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit kept telling me, no. And I leave it alone. Uh -huh. I'm telling you, I've gotten a bad habit. Yeah. 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 I really have. And whatever you're spending most of your time on, that's your eye. Yeah. Yeah. It's just the truth. Mm -hmm. Is God truly first in your life? Uh -huh. Are you being wise? You know, I'm going to still say this to you, and I'm not trying to hurt your feelings, but when you only want to go to church once a week, mm -hmm. Sunday morning, Christian, I'm going to tell you something. I don't know if you're going to make it. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm just going to tell you the truth. Yeah. Because I'm going to just tell you the truth. You're not hot for God. Mm -hmm. You're really not. Mm -hmm. You've got other things that you're allowing to distract you. Uh -huh. Everybody has used the COVID excuse mm -hmm. that I can't go to church on Sunday evenings anymore. I can't go on Wednesday. Oh, it might rain outside, but if you wanted to go to a party, you could sure go to it. If you wanted to shop, you could sure go to it. If you want to talk on the phone, you could sure do that. If you want to look on the internet, you can sure do that, can't you? But you can't come to church more than once a week. Just the truth. And I'm going to tell you, you're fooling yourself. Yes. You're going to be left here. I'm just telling you, this is the warning, and God has gave this church. He's already told you. He's already told me. He said, listen, there's some of this church is the church of Ephesus. Yeah. You're not in love with me. You're doing a routine of coming to church. Yeah. You're, you're, you're not in love with me. Listen, I love God. If I go to a revival, I go to a revival. I go to church as much as possible. Yes. But I still fall short. But I'm going to tell you something. You better get on fire for God today. You're going to miss it. You better quit excusing, I don't feel good. Well, if you don't feel good, you better go to church so that he can fill you with the Holy Spirit so you can feel better. She yeah. so yeah. don't feel like going to church properly all the time, but I'm going to tell you something. She's faithful. Sunday morning, she's here. Wednesday's here. I've come up here. A lot of times, I don't see a lot of you on Wednesday. Yes. 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 If I stomped her toes, I didn't stomp yes. them. God stomped them. It's time, and I'm going to tell you something. Aunt Geneva would open the doors here for Sunday evening, but none of you, most of you, don't want to come. She don't want to come by herself. Don't waste her time. Because that's what you're doing. She wants to be. She, she would be here any time. I've watched her come during revival, sick as a dog, and still make herself. I've seen her tramp out in the bad weather and come. Because she's the pastor of the church and she's got to open the doors whether she feels like it or she don't. But her congregation ain't on fire for God. God Only some of you, yes. not all of you, Jesus, help us, are on fire. Help us, Lord. I'm telling you, Lord, help us, Lord. you're fooling yourself. Yes. I want you to wake up today. Mm -hmm. You need to wake up. Praise God. Listen, he tells us in James 1, 2, and 4, Dear brother and sister, when trouble of any kind comes your way, consider it opportunity for great joy. For you know, when your faith is tested, your endurance has the chance to grow. So let it grow. 
For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. Listen. The devil's telling you every time you want to go to church, no, no, no. He brings up an excuse. You get on the phone. You don't do it. You got to push through it. Whether you want to come to church or not, you got to push through it. So you can build your endurance. How does faith come? By hearing the word of God. But if you don't come, you can't hear the word of God. How are you going to hear it? You're not here enough. You can go to the store two or three times a week. You can do all these things, but you can't come to the house of God two or three times a week. Listen, once a week is not enough. I'm telling you, you at least need to be coming on Wednesday to get some oil so you can make it again till Sunday. It's the truth. You, listen, if you want to learn, you better start learning now. Listen to what he says in Ephesians 5, 1 and 2. Imitate God, therefore, in everything you do, because you are his dear children. Live a life filled with love, following the example of Christ. Did Jesus Christ miss church? No, that's all he did was go around and preach the good news of the gospel. From town to town, he was always doing it. Imitate him. Take up your cross daily. I'm telling y'all, a whole lot of Christians get ready to miss the rapture. Oh my God, my God, my God. I'm truly, I'm telling you. Oh my God, my God, my God. Because they're not worthy. They got other loves in their lives. Out of truth. Uh -huh. and, it, and I told you, I'll confess any of my sin. I, I have sin. Yeah. And mine is the fun. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you, God has dealt with me for about the last month with it. He keeps telling me, you want a closer relationship with me, you say that I'm first in your life, Jeff, but 99% of the time throughout the day you're on the phone instead of talking to me and letting me guide you and teach you. You say, Jeff, you want to be a preacher for me. You want to go around evangelizing. Well, Jeff, you're not even getting in my word enough. You're not studying enough. You're not praying enough. You're letting the phone do it. If you want promotion, be obedient. How, how many of you want the blessings of God in yeah. Deuteronomy 28? Yeah. Well, listen, you got to diligently obey Him yeah. to get those blessings. Yeah. That means you got to let the idols go out of your life and place Him first. Yes. That's what it means. These five wives was ready. They was on fire for God. They had a good prayer life. They was coming to church. Their faith was growing at every opportunity. Even though they went to sleep, they was ready. Yeah. They had trimmed their wits. They had trimmed the sin out of their life. They was in love with God. He was continually sanctifying them. He was making them holy, blameless, without spot. Uh -huh. Are you doing that? Oh my God. We can do all these things. And I am guilty of it too. Mm -hmm. I went to church last night on Saturday because God told me, he said, listen, why do you want to sit around, pick up that phone 30 times, and you can be in church learning? Because you ain't too grown up that you can't be fed. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm still a baby. I tell a lot of people that. Praise God. Praise the Lord. I really do. I don't care if I have preached the gospel for four years. I do not care. I don't care that I went to college. I don't know it all. But i got to spend time with God. That's how you get revelation, by being obedient. Listen, I got jealous of a boy. I won't mention his name. Me and Aunt Geneva had this talk. And I said, Lord, why is he getting to go and preach in this big revival and not me? Am I not faithful, Father? He strictly told me straight up. He said, because he's obedient to me. Uh -huh. He has served me for 21 years. Praise he is faithful. Yes. Every Sunday, he's there whether he preaches or not, whether he plays music. Wherever he can go to church, he goes to church. He spends time with me. He ain't like the rest of the people out there. He's not married, chasing all the girls and doing all this stuff, worried about himself, his flesh. He said, that's why I opened the door. He said, if you want a little taste of that, you want to go and have bigger crowds and go to different places. He said, you're going to have to be obedient. He said, put the phone down. I'll show you. I'll bless you. But you got to get your mind right. Yeah. And I, I've been guilty of this, I'll be honest with you, uh, last minute, get my messages uh -huh. together. Uh -huh. 
because I was so distracted with that stupid phone. Yes, yes. Did you ever notice on that apple there's a bite out of it? It's that bad fruit that will really mess you up. It'll take a piece of your life if you let it on there. It really does. And I'm guilty of it, guys. And I'm sure there's many of you. Listen, he tells us in Ephesians 5, 5 and 6, he says, You can be sure that no immoral, impure, or greedy person will inherit the kingdom of Christ and of God. For a greedy person is, listen to this, an idler. He's worshiping the things of the world. Uh -huh. He tells us, worshiping the things of the world. Uh -huh. He says, don't be a fool. But those who try to excuse their sins for the anger of God will fall on all day. That Listen, that's what's going to happen to the five foolish. The Holy Spirit leaves out of here, but they know God. Yeah. That's how they know. Listen, the 144,000 is coming from the Jews. They're Jews, exactly. That, that, to get ready. That's right. But listen, that, them five will be here. They'll have to endure God's wrath. They'll have to be martyred. They'll wash the robes and the blood because they'll accept Jesus Christ and won't deny it. They won't take the mark of the beast, but they will suffer. Suffer to get when if you'll just do what he wants today, you'll be raptured. Praise God. Praise God. That's but right. the five will yeah. suffer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know this is a hardcore message. Oh, my God, my God, my God. It's true. But it's the truth. Jesus, Listen, he help tells us, for an example, Matthew 5, 13. You are the salt of the earth, but if uh -huh. the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It's good for nothing. Salt preserves us. Mm -hmm. The word is the salt. It preserves. When you want to preserve a ham, you pack it full of salt. When you can, salt. Yes. It preserves. Yes. Listen, if you're not getting the salt, you can't be preserved. And I'm going to tell you something, a, a great revelation God gave me, because I was born again, uh -huh. don't mean I can't die spiritually. Uh -huh. He said you can die. Uh -huh. Yes. Yes. You can become the prodigal and die uh -huh. spiritually. Yes. Listen, what did you do? You got justified. Uh -huh. You got sanctified. You got on that, that narrow path. And now you're walking the narrow path. If you get off that narrow path, you will spiritually die. Yeah. If you don't get the word of God in you to preserve you and to teach you and discipline you, you're going to be a five foolish. Yeah. You're going to be five foolish. Oh, Listen, he says the very elect will be. Mm -hmm. See? Won't be. You know it, doesn't it? Yeah. I didn't even have to say the word. You know it, don't you? Uh -huh. You're going to be deceived if you don't get in that word and let it preserve you today. Yes. I'm telling you. You're letting the devil steal the word from you. He comes in like a thief in the night to steal it. you got to get on fire. You have to be a light for the world, church. He tells us in Matthew 5, 14, and then we'll talk about this. You're the light of the world. A city set on a hot hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket. But the lamp said, it said, it's to give light to all of the house. But when you don't continually be filled with the Holy Spirit, you're, you're getting covered. Your light's just got a glimmer. That's what happened to the five foolish. They had a glimmer. They had just a little bit of oil, and it was burning. But when the bride's groom came, their lamp went out. God got tired, and they was covered in sin. They didn't trim their wick. But listen, he tells us, I believe it's in Ezekiel. It might be 37. But you're a watchman. Do you know you're a watchman for your family? He compares it to a pastor, pastor in the flock. Yes. But guess what? You're all pastors for your family. Yes, You're all evangelists. Yes. Uh, 2 Timothy 4, 5. He said, endure afflictions because you're going to endure them. Mm -hmm. Do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. Uh -huh. And he's saying, you got to be that for your family. you got to let that light light up. To draw your family out of the darkness. you got to be the light that goes into the darkness to shine so your family can follow you back out. Oh my God, 
You really got to be a wise virgin in this last day. He tells us in Ephesians 5, 18 and NLT, don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Listen, you can be drunk with other things than wine. You can be drunk with the phone. You can be drunk with money. You can be drunk with the house. You can be drunk with sex. You can be drunk with life. He is just giving you an example. Yes. That's all he's doing. But if you look at it to it spiritually, you can be drunk on anything. Yes. You can make an yes. idol. But he said, be filled with the Holy Spirit so it'll get rid of that kind of stuff in your life. Yes. So that you can get the word of God in you that will preserve you, that salt that you need. And we got to keep putting salt on ourselves or we won't be preserved. That's, right. That's what happened to the five boys. They never kept getting the word of God. They didn't come to hear the word of God so their faith would grow mm -hmm. and they started drifting. Listen, this is a wonderful church and you're wonderful people. And God has given you the warning of the church of Ephesus here and now he's giving you a warning that you're going to miss the rapture. Get your anchor down. Anthony will be here if you will come. But you can't come if you're not going to come. Don't waste your time. Mm -hmm. You got to get the word to preserve you. You got to get full of the Holy Spirit. So you have the desire to come to church. To build your faith. To build your joy. Because the church is going to suffer some persecution before the rapture. Noah suffered. Persecution. They laughed at him. They made fun at him. They got drunk. They were doing all this stuff. And he worked for a hundred years. Well, let me tell you something. The work is about done. The ark is just about built. And those who are ready will go in. And when Jesus Christ shuts the door, no one can open it. You'll have to stay. I'm not saying you're not going to make it to heaven. I'm just telling you you're going to suffer the wrath of God. Because he's going to pour it out. When he takes the restrainer, the Holy Spirit, and he casts the devil from the second heaven down to earth, havoc hits. Uh -huh. Havoc hits. Uh -huh. They will be wars and famines and earthquakes, oh, volcanic eruption. Oh, my God. That's why the uh, moon will turn to blood uh -huh. and the sun, because of the volcanic ash uh -huh. and fires and tsunamis is going to hit places like New York and California and destroy whole cities because he's going to do what he did to Sodom and Gomorrah. Yep. He's going to destroy. Do you know, just do the research, how many people are leaving the big city? Oh, God yes, is right. calling his yep. children out of the city yes, oh, right oh, now. Yep. He's trying to place them in little hometown churches yes. that's preaching the truth. Uh -huh. There's nothing wrong with the mega churches, but you don't get the one-on-one -on -one with the pastor. You need that one-on-one. -on -one. You need mature Christians around you, uh -huh. helping you. It's true. It is a fact, church. Listen, he compares this to a husband and wife. But I want you to listen to this scripture. Ephesians chapter 5, 22 and 24. Listen, do you think Shelly is going to stay with me if I jump the fence and have a couple girlfriends on the side? Would I stay with Shelly if she had a couple boyfriends on the side? No. That's just a fact. Listen what he says. For wives, this means submit to your husbands as to the Lord. For a husband is the head of the, his wife as Christ is the head of the church. We're his bridesmaids. He's the husband. He's the bridegroom. We're his bride. And the five wives will be ready to go into that wedding with him. Mm -hmm. That's all he's doing is giving you that comparison to let you know I'm the head uh -huh. and you're my body. Mm -hmm. You're to submit to me. Yes. I'm the Lord of your life. Mm -hmm. That's what he said. Wow. He is the savior of his body, the church. But if you're not in love with him mm -hmm. and you're not on fire for him and you're not getting the salt of his word, and you only want to come to church because that's your routine on Sunday morning, you better check yourself and examine yourself if you truly love Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Because something is an idol in you. I'm not trying to beat you up. 
I don't go to church sometimes on Sunday evening. And I have no excuse with me preaching on Sunday mornings, preaching on Sunday evening, uh, or afternoon because I go to the nursing home. I should still go Sunday evening because I can't get enough of God. You think he won't give me the strength to drive back up here at 7 o'clock or 6 o'clock in the night or drive someplace at 6 o'clock in the night? He'll give me the strength. The church is not going to be open seven days a week. Could you just give him more time? Can you just let some of your fleshly needs go to do what he wants you to do? Can you just put him first in your life like the five wise? Can you? Well, you know, Anthony, I know she would have. If God told her to open his church on Sunday night, she would do it. She's obedient to God. But her, her congregation will not follow her. Most of her congregation is too busy. They're worried about Sunday dinner. And after I eat that, I'm too tired to come. I, I got a birthday party to go. My kids has got basketball. I want to talk to so-and-so. I want to go shopping. It is the truth. And I fall short of the glory. I'll be the first to tell you. Me. My idol's the phone. Now that I can confess it and bring it out, God can do something with me. I've confessed it today. I've confessed it, I think, the last time I preached here. That prophet that came here and he was a prophet, he was telling me. I already know God had told me the morning about the phone. When the prophet come in and start talking about the phone, it hit me. He said, I'm confirming my word for you, Jeff. So you know what I did on Monday? I left the phone down a little bit. Then before I knew it, I was back right into the routine of first thing in the morning. And I called myself, and the, and the devil was tricking me, picking it up to read my little Bible verse. Well, guess what? I've got a dozen Bibles that I can pick up instead of that phone. But once I pick up that phone, I see I got a message or a messenger. I got a text message. I got this. And before I knew it, I done went to Facebook to see what was said or what was done. And then got me. Then got me. Then I eat a little bit. I, I, I drink my coffee. And I think, well, I haven't really got time to sit down and read my Bible and really work on a message. I need to go to the gym to stay in good shape. Then I got to run here. I got to run there. I got to do that. All distraction. All distraction. The devil is clever. Oh, he's clever. He is sneaky. He's sneaky. I'm telling you. He's clever and sneaky. That's the truth. But listen what he says in Ephesians chapter 5, 25 and 27. For the husband, this means love your wives just as Christ loved the church. He gave up his own life for Can you give your flesh up for Christ today? Oh my God. Can you give it up? He gave his stuff up for us on that cross to, to cleanse us of all unrighteousness, to love us, to protect us, to grow us, to sustain us. Can we give up? Oh my God. Can we give our lives up, our fleshly lives? Because you're going to spend eternity in heaven. Can we give it up today? Or are we selfish? The flesh is all about self. Can you give your life up? He gave his up so you can spend eternity. Can you give up some of your wants and what some of your desires that you have in the flesh to serve him and to put him first? Can we? Because listen what he wants to do with you. He wants to make you holy. He wants to clean you. He wants to wash you by the cleansing of God's word. Because he's the word. He wants to cleanse you. He wants to make you spotless. Without blame. That's the church he's coming for. So many people miss it. Listen to me. Your spirit is saved. But your soul is not. He tells you in read First Peter one, your ninth verse. Your soul is still not saved. You got to renew your mind. And two against one wins. If I go back here and fight Craig, my odds are better if Junior and Daniel will help me than me trying to fight Craig by myself. I'll have a lot tougher time fighting Craig. By myself. But I'll have an easier time if I got Daniel and Junior helping. 
But listen, if you get your body in unity, if you get your mind with the spirit, your flesh will have to come along. Yeah. And three is unity. And the only way that you can get in unity in your body, because you're a body, soul, and a spirit, is to renew your mind with the word of God, to wash your mind with the word of God, to let all the old things die. Let everything become new to you in Christ Jesus. That's what he tells us. Listen, he did this to present her to himself as a glorious church, without a spot, without a wrinkle, without a blush. Blemish. Instead, she will be holy and without fault. Without fault. Yes. So that tells you, and holy means you ain't got nothing on you. Mm -hmm. He didn't say you'll have a couple little spots on you. Mm -hmm. He said you'll be holy mm -hmm. and blameless and without fault. But the only way you can do now listen, I was just gonna go ahead and give it to you. There is a difference in practicing sin and falling into a sin. Practicing means you're really good at it. Yeah. You're really, you hear the Holy Spirit, but ah, uh, you know, God lets me get away with that. His grace is enough. His unmerited, listen, that grace runs out. Mm -hmm. He's already had the unmerited favor when he hung on the cross and gives you the power by the Holy Spirit to overcome the world. World. Listen, he said, you will overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your mm -hmm. testimony. Mm -hmm. Is your testimony holy? Is it clean? Is it without spot? Is it without wrinkle? Listen, you have to give your life to save your life. Read Matthew chapter 10, verses 39. That was Jesus. Read it, Aunt Geneva. Listen what he says. This is what Jesus Said. Not what I say, because what I say don't matter. Okay. Yet Matthew chapter 10, verse 39. It says, He that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. That's the truth. Look, there it is. You have to lose the old life. You got to lose it. You got to let it go. When you lose it, you find your new life in Christ Jesus. That's where it is. But you got to lose the flesh. And we make an idol out of the flesh. I like to look good. I lift weight. I like to dress nice. But that's fleshly desires. That's the truth. That's about me. Don't I look nice in my new suit, my black shoes? I'm all buffed up where I lift them weights. Listen, that's all about self. That's all about flesh. What did I tell you? I, I would tell myself, after I got distracted, i got to stay in good shape, man. i got to look good when I get up here to preach that word. That's all about me, isn't it? That ain't a thing to do with God. He don't care if I would be 600 pounds as long as I was preaching the truth. It's a fact, isn't it? Listen, here is God's character, and this is the character that the church should be producing. It's right here, Galatians chapter 5, 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That is God's character. And listen, he is the firstborn among many brothers. This, is, this should be our character. Yeah. You know how to fulfill, fulfill the law? Love God with all your heart, all your mind, and all your soul. And love your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. That fulfills the law. Because when you love something else so much, you let the other things go. I'm telling you. Remember when you was dating that person? Before you got married, and all you could think about was loving them, doing things for them, helping them. That's all you thought about. Well, that's where we got to be with Christ. He's our husband. We're his bride's groom. And we got to produce this character. We got to let the old things today pass away. Let them go, guys. Bury them. Don't keep digging them old things back up. And get rid of the idol. God's going to do an altar call when I'm done with this message. And the Lord told me to tell you, whatever idol in your life when I'm done with this message, mm -hmm. don't be ashamed. Come up here and give it to him. Yeah. If you don't pray and offer the idol up to him, there's no sacrifice for that idol.
you're keeping it. And, you're, and the blood is not cleansing you of it. Because you're not offering it. What did I tell you? In the Old Testament, they took animals. And they offered them. In the New Testament, it's us. Going, altar means God's table. It's us offering our flesh to Jesus Christ daily, taking up our cross. Daily, he wants us to come to him and offer our flesh. Our desires in the flesh. He wants us to offer them to him. So that he can take them away. I told you, you're the pot of gold, guys. Listen to what he said. 2 Corinthians 7, 1. Therefore, having these promises, we love. Listen to what he says. Let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit. Perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Did he say keep some of that filthiness? Did he not say all, everything? What is, what is so confusing about all? How can you reason yourself into I can have a little? When he says cleanse yourself of all filthiness of the flesh. I can't keep some of it. I can't do a little bit of adultery once in a while. Because I ain't making it. I'm not going to make it. Do you understand he put the ring on your finger? You're committing adultery when you go back out and play with the devil. It is spiritual adultery. When you don't place him first, you're fornicating adultery with the devil. When you won't come to church more than once a week, it's because you got another husband. You're committing adultery. Wake up today. Start getting on fire. Antonina will obey God, but her congregation's got to obey God too because she cannot make you come. She can't make it. Make it. You might say, well, I ain't got enough gas money. I promise you, God will give you enough gas money that you can come and serve him. He's the provider. He's never left me out. I want you to know that. You're going to have to put all your armor on. There's seven stages to putting it on. And I went over it. Go back on YouTube and watch the message about armor. Listen, you got to wake up and get the mind of Christ in every morning. Jesus, help us, dude. you got to put the bright stage of righteousness on. You really do. you got to build the ways to hold your armor on to protect yourself. And if you ever notice that that's compared to a Roman soldier, there's nothing on the back to protect them. You gotta keep moving forward in Jesus Christ on the narrow path. Yeah. You can't keep turning your back for the devil to stick you in the back and knock you off the narrow path. You gotta keep persevering. Yeah, Why did Paul say, I fought the good fight? Because it was a fight. He was in prison, he was getting beaten. Yeah. Oh my gosh, 39 lashes, I forget how many times he got stoned, yeah. he was persecuted. Day and night, he didn't have everything he wanted to eat. No. He didn't have a mansion on the hill. He didn't have $5 million in the bank. But he was sufficient in anything he had because the Lord always provided yes. for him. Thank God. Didn't he? Yes, he did. But it's all about us, guys. It's a, I'm the same way. Listen, when, listen, when the Holy Spirit preaches through me, I'm hearing what God is saying. Because it goes for me, too. And God, I pray in Jesus' name you take all idols out of each and every one of our lives. Lord, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, bring up the idol that is so, so easily ensnaring them today. Let them come today, Father, up to the altar and do away with these idols today. Let them get some new oil, Father. Let them get a new hunger, a new desire to follow after you, Father, in these last days before the rapture. In Jesus' name. Listen, I'm going to give you this scripture, and I'm just almost finished. Matthew 7, 13 and 14. Listen to what he says. And Jesus Christ is the gate. There is no other way to heaven. He says, enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there will be many who will go by it. Yes. He said, because narrow is the gate, and difficult yes. is the way which leads to life, and they will be 
few that find it. Difficult means hard. I told you the sower message many times, three quarters of the seed falls away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now listen, God is saying out of his ten prize groom, five will be ready and five won't. Mm -hmm. Five will be ready to go into the marriage supper of the Lamb mm -hmm. and escape the tribulation because they prayed yourself worthy. They kept the oil. They kept God's grace. They put him first. They got to escape the coming things that was coming on the earth. Oh the five foolish had to stay. That's just the way it is. I told you the story about Noah. <laughs> oh, I've been hearing that God's going to flood the earth. I've been hearing about that rapture since I was little. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Things just keep on going the same way. Uh -huh. Listen, it'll happen in the of an eye. The said. trumpet will sound. Uh -huh. The dead will rise. And those who are alive will be caught up right. and changed. And God has showed me that I'm going to get raptured. And you know why he shows me that I'm going to get raptured? To encourage me. Yes. To get into church. To get more of the word yes. to, so that I can get that salt to preserve my faith. To grow my faith. So I have the endurance to do it. Salvation is a free gift. He has given you every tool that you need. But he is not going to take your will from you. No. Listen, there's where once saved, always saved, gets it wrong. Yeah. He will not take your will. Uh -uh. He didn't take the angels in heaven's will. Uh -uh. They had a choice. Yeah. A third decide, I'm not going to serve him. Well, mankind, three quarters of mankind yeah. is going to choose not to serve him. <laughs> it's the opposite. Mm -hmm. A third up there, two thirds of mankind uh -huh. will go to hell. And he didn't even make hell for us. No. It was for the angel and his demons and Lucifer. Yeah. It's never for us. for us. Listen what happened to them five foolish virgins because they, they wasn't hot for him. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went in with him to the wedding. And the door was shut. Afterwards, the other virgins came also saying, Lord, Lord, open up. Yeah. But he answered and said, Surely I say to you, I don't know you. You wasn't ready. You took your engagement ring off. Uh -huh. The Holy Spirit left you yeah. because he leaves. You're here. Yeah. You took your ring off. The Holy Spirit. Listen, when it says he seals you, back in the old days, it was a seal the king did. He would stamp it, his signature. Well, God has put a stamp on you. Yes, he has. But if you don't follow his will, the stamp leaves you. It leaves. And you stay. Because you didn't give him your will. Only those who do the will of the Father shall inherit the kingdom of heaven. Because you'll see begotten you children of lawlessness, which lawlessness is disobedience. I'm going to tell you again because God's telling me to tell somebody this. You know what obedience is? Submission to another's authority. Yeah. Are you submitting to his authority, his word? He said, don't forsake the assembling of yourself. Mm -hmm. He says to be in church as much as you can to get the oil, to build your faith, to, so the word will purify you and preserve you and give you endurance to make it. He's not going to keep telling you. Listen, Revelation 3.15. I know your works, that you're neither cold or hot, I could wish you were colder. He said, I wish you would have never knew me, uh -huh. then been hot for me at one time and go to lukewarm. Yeah. That's what he said. Because he also says if you leave him, it would have been better for you to never have known yeah. me. Yeah. He tells you that. Yeah. If you know me and you love me, oh gosh, when you go to hell, mm -hmm. it will be worse for yes. you. That's what he said. That's what he says he's going to do. So then, because you are lukewarm, neither cold or hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Who is the head? Him! Mm -hmm. Where does vomit come out of? Him! Out of his body. We're his body. Yeah. And if we don't get ourselves blameless, without spot, without holy, without on fire for him, he's going to vomit you out. He's going to cast you out. He's going to take the ones that's ready up, and you're going to remain. That's what he's saying. Look at it spiritually. He's given us illustrations of man 
But look at it in the spirit. Look at it. He is the head. We are his body. And if there's anything sick in God's body that won't get healed and won't let him do it, he's going to put it out. He's going to put it out. Anything that's in my body, my body will put it out if it's not right. My body will attack it. Well, that's what Christ will do. He'll put you out. That's what he's going to do. If that don't scare you, and if that don't make you have a reverent fear of Christ, oh my gosh, I pray for you in Jesus' name that he wakes you up today. The body is all of you. It's not this church house. Aunt Geneva can have church by herself with just her and God, but she needs you here. I just want to ask you a question. Uh, uh, before you answer in your own mind or don't tell me, how many of you want your family to go to hell? Is your flesh and your desire and your idol worth your children going to hell? Or your mother and father? You know, I have told you this. God told me not that I'd ever leave. I promise you in Jesus' name, I will never leave God. I don't care what I got to go through. I'll never leave God because God told me, Jeffrey, you're not going to leave me. But if you would leave me, all the people that you was a light for is going to say, Jeff couldn't handle it. I can't handle it. I would drag more out with me than I brought even. They said Jeff was a tough guy. I've seen him beat up some of the biggest guys. I've seen him do all kinds of things. You would be amazed. When they would say, man, if Jeff can't take it, I can't take it. Mm -hmm. Well, let me ask you something. If you can't take it, how are you going to draw your family That's to That's right. I'll leave. And I'm going to tell you something. You can't take it unless you come no, and get the oil bill. bill. It's true. just the truth. I'm not yelling at you. No. I'm trying to excite you. Yeah. <laughs> because let me tell you something. The Lord's telling me to tell you. Once your family goes to hell, you ain't praying them out. I don't care what you've heard from the Catholic. Get the thought out of your head. There is no purgatory, God said. He showed me there's a heaven and a hell. Once you have made your choice, you don't go in between. And some family member pray because somebody takes that in here. He's telling me, you ain't praying them out. It's eternal. That's what he said. Because somebody's got that foolish notion in their head. He said, cast that out of your head today. You're not getting prayed. Out of hell. You cannot, will not be. No. He said, remember Lazarus in there. Yeah. The rich man was there for eternity. He never got out, did he? What did Abraham tell him? You're done. You're stuck. And you're going to be stuck there too if you don't pay attention to God. I'm going to end with this verse here. 1 John 3, 6, 8. Back to the word abides. And abides is in uh, John 15, eight times. That tells you how important he keeps telling you. Abide, 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 abide. He's yeah. over because he don't want you to get fertility of the mind. That means a leaky mind. That's what Paul said. Sure up your mind yes. with the mind of Christ. Be determined. Persevere. Abide in God and his word. He says here, whoever abides in him, that's not sin. He doesn't say sins all the time, practice the sin. He says, whoever abides in him does not sin. From whoever sins has neither seen him or knows him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Don't allow anybody to deceive you once saved, always saved. Or you can be prayed out of hell. He who practices righteousness is righteous. And he says, just as he is righteous, he who has sinned is of the devil. Yes. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Oh my God. Oh we know that whomever is born of God does not sin, but he who has been born of God keeps himself, and the wicked one can't touch him. Thank the Lord for that. Because God keeps you from the sin. He keeps you from that. You really want to know what your salvation is? Read the books of Peter, 1 Peter and 2 Peter. He'll tell you. He'll tell you. You'll see the Trinity in the first few verses. You'll see everything. Listen, 
It's a three-step process. God is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You are a body, a soul, and a spirit. You are created in His image. Yeah. Salvation is a three-step uh, process, and it means unity in the Hebrew, the number three, justification. Sanctification and glorification. you got to get justified first, then you got to get sanctified, that continual cleansing, yeah. and then one day you'll get the glorification. Yeah. And then you'll never sin again. When we come back to rule and reign with Christ during the millennial, they'll still be sin on the earth. The devil will be bound, but there'll still be a testing uh -huh. for the Jews for a thousand years. They'll be sin. But see, Jesus Christ can't be tempted by sin. When you get the glorified body, you won't be tempted by sin anymore. You won't want the sin anymore. But you haven't made it yet. You've got the engagement ring today, guys. And you still got it on because the five foolish still had it on to the last minutes before the trouble. You still got your engagement ring. Are you going to go get the wedding band? Are you going to have enough oil to get the wedding band? Oh my God, my God, my God. Are you going to enter into the marriage supper of the Lamb? Oh my God, my God, my God. Or do you want to just take your chances in the tribulation? He doesn't say all my children make it to heaven because there are many of them will say. Then we do many wonders in your name. Then we prophesy in your name. Then we cast out demons in your name. And he says, I'll be good. You be gone, you children of lawlessness, disobedience. That's what he said. I never knew you. Don't know who you are. The Holy Spirit left you. You didn't have to, you didn't have to seal on you anymore. So if you got an idol in your life, and I'll have, I, I hate that, the one, but you, sweetie, if you want to place a song, I've done nothing but the blood. Come up here. And listen, I don't care. Listen, you can't be down sad. Yes. But make yes, that's right. do an action. Yes. And walk up and say, you don't tell me what your idol is. Walk up. If you can't get him, give it to him today. That's right. That's right. Come and give it to him. Say, take whatever is distracting me. Whatever's taking the fire from me. So I need your will, Father, to make it. That's what you're going to have to do. And if there's somebody that ain't been saved, Romans chapter 10, 9 and 10, confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ died for your sins and God the Father raised him from the dead and you shall be saved. Ask him to be the Lord of your life. Jesus, Lord, Jesus, Lord. Ask him to forgive you for your sins and be washed in that precious blood of the Lamb. And if you need prayer or something, Jesus. the altar's open. Jesus, Lord, Jesus. Do you notice there's three words? Faith, Believing and trust. Look up the definition in uh, in the Greek. They all mean the same. They mean obedience. Because if you have faith in God, you do what he said. If you believe in God, you do what he said. If you trust in God, you do what he said. Three. All three words are action words. Unity. Thank you.